Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Unexpected Entrepreneur Podcast. This week, Jesse is back, and yes, we totally took last week off because we both got hit by like the worst fever. I was sick, and then Jesse was sick. We were like just both sick. It was not a great time, but we are feeling a lot better this week, and yeah, the podcast is officially back because we've also been just kind of recording episodes like each week as they come instead of pre-scheduling for once, uh, which is also why we ended up having that pause last week. But this week, we're going to be talking all about how to become the go-to photographer in your area by using educational content, which is a topic we're really, really excited about. And also, if you've listened to some of our recent episodes with other photographers who have been working with us for blogging, you've seen that even clients who specifically work with us in a blogging capacity have been able to really kind of see themselves, you know, even get on like vendor lists and everything from blogging. And that kind of comes along with becoming the go-to photographer by posting a lot of educational content. And of course, before we dive in, again, if you've been listening at all this season, you know that we have been promoting our monthly blogging service throughout our entire blogging season. It is called Back Pocket Blogger, and it is a six-month blogging retainer where we will write two blog posts per month for you. It is completely on demand, which is something that we've never seen before. So it's one of the reasons why we love this offer so much. Basically, what that means is all you have to do is put in a request for a blog post by filling out a really short form. You share your photos with us, and then we write the blog post for you within 72 hours and send it back to you. And it is literally that simple. After you leave feedback, we'll go ahead to and also fully upload the post for you. We'll send you monthly analytics reports as well so that you know exactly how your blog posts are doing. But you can learn more about that down in the description. And that investment is $3,000 pay in full for the six months, or you can also pay on a $500 a month payment plan. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Jesse. So the first thing that we want to talk about when we are thinking about educational content is the importance of educational content. So I know a lot of photographers specifically will post a lot of stuff about the sessions that they do, their images, talk about their couples, everything like that. But educational content should definitely not be slept on. So this is content that's going to help you build authority and credibility in the photography industry. It's also going to help you build authority and credibility with Google, which is what we want. The more credibility that Google has in, in our eyes, the, the better. And it's going to help enhance your SEO on you know those specific posts, but then also across your site in general. You're also going to be providing value to your audience. So when we think about these posts, we are answering a question that they have, whether it's something about a process, if it's something about photography style, if it's something about a specific session, these are questions that people have and we can be the resource and the kind of guiding light to actually answer them. And it also helps you differentiate yourself from others. So we always like to say that in any blog post, you kind of want to find that unique angle, any specific kind of hot takes that you have or different opinions that you have that can add that value, that can give people maybe a different view on things or additional information to kind of build the full picture. So educational content is a great way to do this. And it's definitely something that we see a lot of photographers skip out on, but it can be really, really powerful for your business. So if you are ready to start getting into educational content, the first thing you're going to want to do is actually try to decide what you should actually write about, right? So with that, you're going to want to try to decide what your actual expertise is. Now, this doesn't have to be like super difficult. Our main recommendation is, you know, if you're like a wedding photographer in a specific area like Las Vegas, then you're probably going to be able to really solidify yourself as an expert photographer in Las Vegas by heavily focusing on, you know, Las Vegas wedding photography content. The same goes if you're like a brand photographer, just really go like really hard on just writing all things educational for brand photography. No matter what, you know, specific little like niche photography you're in, you can really kind of hone in on that and really make that your unique thing that you're just going to write about to really become the go-to in your area. You can also try to understand what your audience actually wants to learn from you. And a great way to do this is to go through your different social media messages, think back on, you know, the different questions you get asked a lot, whether on sales calls, discovery calls, through emails, after you send proposals, everything like that. Or even look back at your FAQs. I know we say that one a lot and try to almost like use those as starting points for figuring out what you should actually write about. And then of course, too, you really want to make sure that what you're writing is actually connected with your own brand and the services that you offer. So like if you're a wedding photographer and you only offer wedding photography, probably doesn't make sense to be writing a whole bunch of like family photography posts, just as an example. 
And when it comes to this educational content, there are so many topics that you can write on. I feel like a, a misconception is that, you know, when it comes to portfolio pieces or anything like that, you can just, you know, write on every session and you'll never run out of anything, but you really will never run out of educational topics to write on. So some things that you can do are any like how-to guides, step-by-step -step processes, even some people, especially when it's their first time working with a photographer, walking through the process of like what it is, how to work with them, what you can expect, anything like that. Any sort of tips and tricks, we know for sure anything about planning sessions, locations, or even outfits are great keywords and educational content that you can put out. You can also do the flip side if you want to focus on photographer education as well. So maybe you have a mentoring program or courses or anything like that. You can also talk about photographer specific things with your educational content, like how to improve your skills or any specific equipment that you use or anything like that. So it can kind of go both ways with this content on, on what you do. And we can kind of also throw case studies a little bit in here, depending on how you kind of look at them. We have with our clients in the past written educational posts, but kind of tied them into a recent session or wedding or something that a client has done to show off those photos because we always want to make sure we're showing off the new content and also show how the tips that we are talking about, what we're going over, whether it's you know outfits or locations or whatever it might be, what that can actually look like in a real session. So you can still show off your work and kind of have those you know quote unquote portfolio type pieces, but still put out that educational content in them. So when it comes to creating your educational content, of course, you want to make sure that it is high quality. So here are a few things that we recommend to make sure that you're actually writing content that is actually going to like hit and resonate with your audience. So first things first, always make sure that you are actually explaining things in a way that a reader is actually going to understand. And I'm sure you've heard this before. You're always told to kind of like stop using all the jargon that like you as a photographer are going to know best. And if you do like use anything that, you know, you're probably going to know better or like any other photographer reading is going to know better, but like the average person reading isn't, just make sure that you're like fully taking the time to, you know, even explain what something might mean. Just really think reader first. Next, of course, you're going to want to use visuals. Make sure you're using photos, though, that actually match with what you're writing about, if that makes sense. Your photos should be there to basically almost kind of like go along with your words and just really highlight like what you're saying. And they should not actually be the main focus of your article. I'm going to say that again. Your photos should not be the main focus of your article. We're big believers that especially with educational content, you should have more words than images. Good way to still like add in a lot of images if you want is to use gallery blocks. Most different blog platforms are going to have different gallery blocks that you can use. So what we like to do, especially with our own clients is, you know, every heading will have either like one horizontal photo or it will have like a gallery of, you know, three to six like vertical photos or whatever. We just like to try to keep things like looking crisp and clean throughout. And then next to, and this might sound like Duh, KP, like I totally know this, but make sure that you're actually writing on like hyper specific things with your articles, especially when it comes to SEO. I know we'll talk a little bit about that in a second, but the more niche and like hyper specific you can get with your content, the better. And what I mean by this is instead of just writing about like the best engagement photo outfit ideas or whatever, you can literally like get even more niche and talk about, you know, the best ones in fall, the best ones in winter. Like as niche as you can get, the better because people are literally out there searching for that. And if you can come up first for that, that is awesome. And also when you get more niche, one, you're going to be able to go a lot more deeper into the topic and really kind of position yourself as a resource and expert in that specific thing. But they tend to also be a little bit easier to rank for, which is a little bit of an insider tip for SEO. So the more longer tail keywords that you can go for, the better. And then last but not least, when it comes to educational content, like yes, your main goal is to actually you know, share education, but that doesn't mean that you don't want to include your own personal experience throughout. However, don't make the whole article your personal experience. What we like to recommend is like share the educational information and then throughout kind of like weave in your own like beliefs, your ideas, your own experiences that you've had. Another important part of the educational post is how you are actually structuring them. So what the layout of it looks like. And the major reason behind this is because it can be really easy with educational posts to make them feel super word heavy, have really long paragraphs of text that might look okay on desktop, but then you get on mobile and you feel like you're just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. So 
when it comes to these educational posts, we definitely want to make sure we have an introduction that kind of grabs people's attention, outlines a little bit about what they're going to be learning about, what you're going to be talking about, at least talks about, you know, what the tip or the idea or, you know, the guide or whatever it is uh, that it's about actually is. And then when we're looking at the content, our favorite way to do this is with educational content, we always like to try to make it a listicle if we can. Those tend to perform the best and it makes it really easy to kind of organize it. So we'll start off with kind of a main H2 heading that talks about it. So say we're doing a outfit ideas. We can have, you know, here's our best tips for outfit ideas. And then we can break it up by whatever we want. So maybe we want to do a general outfit idea one and we want fall, winter, spring, summer, or casual, dressy, or whatever it might be. Those can kind of be our H3 headings going down. That way, as people are scrolling, one, if they're looking for specific information, the headings jump out at them. They can really quickly skim it and be like, okay, this is what I'm looking for. And two, it's going to kind of break up those paragraphs of text, make it not feel so super text heavy. You also want to make sure that you're still putting photos in there. Like KP said, we like, you know, every heading, if we can put an image to kind of break it up. Um, and then make sure you're using some sort of call to action at the end. So normally this is going to be in the conclusion. We'll do a little summary of what the article was about. And then at the end, put a call to action to whatever service it is that you're talking about. So if you're talking about, you know, engagement outfit ideas, put a call to action to your, you know, services page where you list out your engagement services or your contact page or family services or weddings or whatever it might be that you're selling in that blog post, make sure that you have some sort of call to action there because we want to make sure that people are continuing to click on the site. We want to, you know, be leading them to our main pages, getting them invested in our services, getting them invested in us as a business owner so that they then connect with us. So that's kind of the like key breakdown and how we would organize it. But like I said, if you can make it a listicle, lists are great. People love them. It makes it really easy to break it up and be like, okay, here's all the points here that I'm looking at. But headings are going to be a major thing here. We want to make sure that we're using them to kind of break up all of this content. Now time to talk very briefly about SEO. We're not going to go too in depth with SEO because it, we could like literally spend hours talking about this. But just a few things to keep in mind when writing educational content and keeping, you know, SEO in mind as well, like just following those best practices. First, don't start writing until you've done SEO research first. You really want to make sure what you're writing about is something people are actually searching for. You might be surprised too what people are actually searching for versus what you think they're searching for, which is why we always suggest doing that research. And when it comes to places to find keyword research, you probably heard us shout out these two different places before, but the first one that we use and love is a website called Key Search. I think it's about $14 or $17 a month. We really need to look it up because every episode we're like, I think it's this much, but it's less than $20 a month. And then the other option, if you do want a free option, is Uber Suggest. But we find that between the two, there can actually be a lot of discrepancies between like what one platform says is ranking and another. It's well, just another thing to keep in mind. These really are just tools so that we're able to kind of just gauge what we think people are actually searching. Then be sure to actually use your keywords naturally throughout your content. Do not keyword stuff. If you are keyword stuffing, this basically means you're overusing the keyword throughout the article. Google doesn't love this. Readers aren't going to love it because it's going to sound very robotic. Just kind of use that keyword and different variations of it very naturally throughout the article. Generally, this means using it every 500 words or so. Be sure to also write, you know, a very engaging title. We love using power words and titles. And then also write a meta description for the article. And of course, use your images with alt text. Always write alt text for all your images. This is another reason why it can be helpful to not, you know, put an entire gallery in, in a blog post that you're writing. And last but not least, always be sure to also interlink. This is one thing that we see overlooked a lot, but especially when it comes to educational content, if you are a wedding photographer, for instance, and you're mentioning a venue that you love photographing at, link to that venue. Because then you can also, when you go to share that blog post in other places, which we'll also be talking about next, you can actually like tag the you know, venue. And you might also get like some extra shares or some more eyes on the article that you've written, which can, of course, just like help your business even more. And you can also start to build more connections. Now, like KP said, your blog post does not end and kind of the, the work on it does not end when you hit publish. 
super important part of any blog post, but especially educational ones, are going to be to promote it outside of your blog. So a really easy way to do this is sharing the post on social media, especially when it comes to educational content. People love educational content. And this is a great way to kind of break up your feed a little bit so that you have some of this educational content without it feeling too overbearing or feel like you know, you're pulling your nails out to try and figure out what to actually write about for educational content. Even if you break it up and use like one heading as a post, that then gives you so many different content ideas that you can use or even, you know, a carousel going over the the main points. People love this type of content. So absolutely, you want to make sure that we're sharing it on social media platforms. If you have a newsletter, definitely put it into your newsletter. You can kind of put a condensed version of the blog post, maybe a sentence or two about each of the main topics. And then at the bottom, you know, have some sort of PS or call to action or something that's like, hey, if you want to learn more about this, check out the full blog post so that they can go and read it. But these places are a great way to expand your reach on your blog post because not everyone who finds you on Google with your blog post is going to follow you on Instagram Not everyone who follows you on Instagram is going to be on your email list. So you want to make sure that you're kind of dispersing this as much as you can and casting as wide of a net as you can. And then like Katie said, make sure you're tagging people. If you talked about certain vendors, if you talk about certain venues, if there's anything specific that you like or anything that, you know, any sort of service that you use that you really think would help your clients, like make sure you're tagging them, make sure you're calling them out. So that one, they might share it as well, or two, it might get their eyes on you, especially if we're looking at, you know, vendors or wedding planners who might have preferred vendor lists, you know, writing a blog post about the venue might be a good way to kind of get your foot in the door to potentially be on their preferred vendor list. So whatever you can do, whoever you can kind of get in contact with or or reach out to kind of slide your blog post in front of their eyes is going to be a great way to get more eyes on your post and potentially more people, more new people as well, seeing it and being drawn in by you and your services and everything like that. And of course, too, you're going to want to make sure that you're actually measuring the impact of your educational content. So what this means is paying attention to your metrics and your analytics, which again is something we will completely do for you in Back Pocket Blogger. But what you're going to want to do most is if you do have Google Analytics installed, if you don't, stop this episode right now and go install it. It is free. But what you want to pay attention to most in your Google Analytics is you can pay attention to your views in a section called pages and screens. You'll be able to see how many views each of your posts is getting. But if you actually want to see like, okay, so how many people are actually clicking on this from Google, because Google Analytics is going to show you everything, like whether they come from social referrals, anything like that. You want to also install Google Search Console onto your website, which again is completely free. And Google Search Console is going to tell you exactly how many clicks from Google each of your posts is getting. And then, of course, as you kind of see what's working best for you as well, you can sort of adjust your content strategy going forward to try to find other unique blog posts that you can write about within the same sort of niche of topics that you are writing about in your educational content. Now, one question that we have gotten about our Back Pocket Blogger service is if we write these educational type posts. And the answer is yes, absolutely. We love educational content. So if you do join... You can come to us with any kind of topic or idea education wise that you want to write about and we'll go, we'll find the keyword for you, make it really easy. You can just kind of let us know the main points that you want us to touch on. We'll flesh everything out for you and send back a post that you can then review. But we absolutely think that educational content is really important on your site and definitely want to help to continue put to put that out. So if you are like, I'm thinking about this, but I also want to do educational content. I don't just want to do portfolio pieces. We're right there with you. Like we can absolutely do this. We've worked with a lot of photographers and we've written a lot of educational posts that have worked really well. So it is something that, you know, you can see success from, you can see inquiries from, and we definitely want to help make sure that you have that content on your site as well. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Next week, we will be back talking all about how to actually reach your ideal clients with a blog. And yeah, we'll catch you next week.